So now we will start module 3 of this course. In this module, I will be first finishing the part on vectors where I will talk about vector integration. Then we will get to various uh, elementary properties of matrices including determinants, linear system and Kramer's rule. So in the first lecture of this module, I will talk about line integrals and potential theory. Then in the second module, I will talk about surface and volume integrals, talk about Green's theorem and Stokes theorem very briefly. And then we will get to, to then I then will start introducing matrices, talk about some basic matrix operations and then a little bit about determinants. Then we will show how to solve a system of linear equations using determinants, what is known as the Kramer's rule. And finally, we will do some practice problems. So, so in this uh, module, there will be five lectures and uh, the fifth lecture will just be practice problems. So, so let us start. So today, I will be talking mainly about line integrals and potential theory. So, so uh, this, this is part of vector integration and uh, in vector integration, okay, you, there are three kinds of ways to integrate vectors. Now, uh, let us just step back a little. We will restrict this discussion to three dimensional space. Okay? So, all this talk about, uh, about line integrals, about surface integrals and volume integrals will be restricted to vectors in a three dimensional space. Okay? So, let us, uh, now what do we want to do? As usually you are, you have done things like integration, integrating over some variable from some limits a to b of some function of x. So, these are, this is something that you are familiar with and uh, the way you are familiar with is that you think, you think that this variable, if this variable x x is shown like this and f of x is some function which is which when you plot it it looks like this and this is point a and this is point b then you know that this integral is nothing but the area under this graph between a and b so it's area under the function from a to b so area under function okay from a to b So that is what you mean by this by this uh, integral over a function. Now, now what do we have here? We have a function, but it's not a function of a scalar. Rather, it's a function of a vector. So f of r. Okay. And what we have to do is what we are thinking of is something like an integral over a vector. So what we want to think this is a general idea of vector integration. This is the general idea of vector integration that we want to do some sort of integral over over a vector, okay? And uh, now, how do we now now how do you put the limits? How do you define this? And uh, as we are discussing that, we'll come to line, surface, and volume integrals very naturally, okay? So it turns out that uh, you can think of you can think of different ways to ways to integrate. Now uh, you could have an integral just over a line okay so in this case your vector vector is something that points in three dimensions so so your r space you uh, your r is a vector in three dimensions okay and now you are integrating a function of vector over various values of r okay so now now this r can point in several different directions for example it can point this way it can point this way it can point this way it can it can go in this direction so all these are various possibilities for this vector r and now what do you mean by integrating over a vector that means you have to integrate over a range of values of r okay now there are different ways to do it okay so so if you integrate over a range of values of r if you say your r can be anywhere in some region okay then you can have a volume integral if you say your r has to be restricted to one line then you get a line integral Okay. So, what I want to emphasize is that depending on, on a range of values of r, of r, 
we can have line, surface and volume integrals. So depending on the range of values of R, you can have line, surface and volume integrals. So for example, if I say that my R should be, should be along R, whatever your R is, it should point along, it should be along this line. So basically, if you have R restricted to this line, then your R can be this, 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 these are the allowed values of R. So these green vectors are the allowed values of R. That touch the line. If you imagine that you are allowing values of R to only take these values okay, and you are doing an integral similar to what we did in the, in the scalar case, okay, then you would get something called a line integral. Okay. On the other hand, suppose you say that uh, in 3D space I have a surface, okay, I have some surface, I okay. will just call the surface S and if my R R can point to anywhere in that surface, any point on the surface, then I will get a surface integral. Okay. So this would be something like a line integral and this would be something like a surface integral. I have not told you how to do the integrals yet, we will come to that. Okay. But just to motivate that depending on what are the allowed values of R, so what you put in these limits, okay, you will get a line or a surface integral. Now you could also have a case where you take some 3D region and uh, you have some volume and your R can point to anywhere inside this volume. It can point to any anywhere inside this volume, then you will get a volume integral. Okay. So, so you can get a line integral, a surface integral or a volume integral in this way. Okay. And uh, we will talk about this in today's lecture and the next lecture. Okay, so now let us get to line integrals. Okay. Now it turns out that, uh, that there is not just one way of defining line integrals, okay. there are a few different ways of defining okay. and uh, ultimately we will stick to only one of them. But uh, basically, see as, a, as I said, when we talk about functions of vectors, vectors, we talked about two kinds of functions. One was what are called as scalar fields and the others were vector fields. Okay. So a uh, scalar field is for example, you can have phi of x of r which is equivalent to phi of x, y, z. Okay, that is a scalar field. Okay. And now, uh, now, 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 how would you do? How would you do an integral involving phi of x, y, z? We'll come to that. Okay. You could also have something like a vector field, v of r. Okay. Which has various components. I mean, each of the comp, it'll have three components. Okay. And uh, and and each of the components will be will be a function of x, y, z. Okay. So, so this will have Vx of x, y, z, Vy of x, y, z and Vz of x, y, z. Okay. So, so now there are uh, some popular ways to define these line integrals okay. and uh, you, know, you know based on what your application is, you use the appropriate one. So one example, uh, one way of defining the line integral is to just do an integral over a C, I will come to what C is, C is the contour of integration, contour or path of integration. Okay. And uh, you can have something like a, like a uh, V, a vector field dotted into dr. Okay. Now, uh, Notice, notice that uh, since R is a vector, dr will also be a vector. Okay, and what we did is we took a vector field. This is a vector field. Okay, and you dot the vector field into dr. Okay, because the vector field has various components. Okay, you dot these, 
with with the various components of dr okay so this is a this is the typical line integral that we'll be talking about okay so so this is this i if you want i can expand this out okay so use dr equal to dx i plus dyj plus tzk okay so so this is a differential element in r okay and uh, if you have if you have these as the components of the vector i can write this as integral over c okay c is a contour okay and what i'll have is vx dx plus vy dy plus vz dz so what you can write is you can write it as a sum of three integrals each of them is an integral over a single variable each of them is integral over a scalar okay so you have vx dx vy dy and vz dz okay so so this is the typical line integral that we'll be using there are other line integrals where instead of a dot you put a cross or or you have a scalar field here which uh, i won't be talking about uh, in this course but uh, but but you might come across those sometimes uh, when you're reading various uh, uh, other books okay but for this course we'll just talk about this type of line integral okay now notice that uh, since v is a vector dr is a vector v dot dr is a scalar okay and so and so this is integral of a scalar so what you get finally is a scalar okay so so this is a scalar okay in other words what you'll get is a number okay this integral if you integrate over a contour and you put various limits okay then you'll get a number now uh, what is a contour what is this contour contour has has two things contour so what you mean by this contour is some path so so if you take this as my space if so if i take this as x y z okay this is some path okay it has some initial point and some final point but the contour is not just specified by the initial and final points it's also specified by the path okay so so contour is specified both by both end points and path okay this is this, this is a very important thing when you're saying a line integral it's not enough just to specify what are the limits you have to specify the path okay and we'll come to this in a bit and we'll see when we actually do some examples of line integrals we'll come to this so this is the definition of the line integral now uh, where does the path enter so the path the path actually specifies relation between x y and z between the coordinates so between this x y and z the contour actually specifies this relation okay now uh, we'll come to the the most uh, popular example of vector integration is to calculate the work done by a force okay and uh, this is where we use the idea of line integrals okay so 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 we'll do this okay and we'll take an example of uh, calculating the work done by a force okay what is it so so the idea is that suppose suppose you have a force f f f is a vector field it's a function of x y z okay and due to this force you displace a particle you imagine that uh, that that you have a particle that is moved by this force okay then what is the work done then work so 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 if you if you displace it by some small amount amount uh, dr okay so so this is displacement so if you if you just move the particle a small distance okay dr okay then the work done is given by f dot dr okay it's a dot product okay and uh, and 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 if you do a if you do over a path so if you if you displace the particle some distance over some path okay let's say you go from you go from point a to point b okay 
then uh, the work done over some contour, we will call this contour C, then the work done is equal to integral over, over the contour C from A to B f dot dr. Okay. So, it is just a line integral. Okay. I have just, I have just explicitly specified the end points okay, A and B. Okay. So, so this is where the, the, this is the most common application of, of vector integration that you will see in, uh, in, the, in chemistry. There are also many such examples in, the, in, uh, in different areas of chemistry and also in engineering and other, and other disciplines. Okay. Now, uh, this, if you look at this, if you look at this picture right here, so, so you have, you have A, you have B and you have this path. Okay. So, now this immediately raises a question that uh, suppose I go from A to B this way. Now, if I go to from A to B by a different path, if I go this way, okay, is the work the same or different? So, if I go through some path C1, okay, is the work same or different? Okay, so, does work depend on path? Depend on path taken. And the answer is yes, in general yes. Okay. Under some special conditions, you will have path independence, but in general, yes, it depends on path. Okay. And, uh, and you will immediately recall when I, when I say this, when I talk about path dependent work and, uh, you know, whether it is, uh, uh, you will, you will immediately recall from your thermodynamics courses, you talk about state functions and you talk about, uh, and you talk about transfer functions like heat and work, which actually depend on the path taken. So, work is dependent on the path taken. Okay. Under some special cases, cases, it is independent of path. Okay, and we will come to that uh, a little later. Okay, but uh, before that, I will come to the example of uh, the path dependence. Okay, so so wh what we said is that the work dependent, uh, work done by a force, in general, it depends on the path taken. Okay, but but I said that under some special cases, it is independent of path. Okay, so what is the condition for path path dependence and path independence? Okay, so so what is condition for for path dependence slash independence? Okay, so the question is when does when is work path dependent and when is it path independent? Okay, and uh, again again this is something that you might be familiar with from your uh, from your thermodynamics courses. So let's take uh, again again here here we'll take uh, we'll take an example of of two D integration. Okay. So, 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 so I'm just, I'm just making this a little easier. Okay, by taking a 2D integration. Okay. So, uh, for example, if you take, uh, if you take uh, f dot dr. Okay. Now this becomes f x of x y d x plus f y of x y d y. Okay. And uh, now, now you want to ask a question. Okay, when is integral from A to B f dot dr independent of path? A to B. Okay, so when is it independent of path from A to B? Okay, now uh, now. The way you can you can see this in many ways, but uh, let me motivate it in the following way. Suppose su suppose I expand this out, so I have integral a to b. Now now if I write this explicit expression for f, I have f x of x y d x plus f y of x y 
dy. Okay. Now, suppose I could write this whole thing, this whole thing as, so suppose I could write this whole thing as, as uh, so if this is equal to, if, if I could write this whole piece as something like dv, okay, I am choosing the term v, okay, from a to b, okay, then, then the integral of dv is just v of b minus v of a, it is it's independent of path, okay. So, if you could write your integral in this form, then it would be path independent, okay. So, the condition for path independence is that you should be able to write f of x of x y dx plus f y of x y dy as dv. Okay, v is some v is some field. Okay, so v depends on x, y, z, a or a or x, y in this case. We don't have z, so v is a function of x, y. So, so, so if you could write it in that form, then it would be path independent. Okay, and the condition for this, this, the condition when this is satisfied. Okay, is uh, is when the partial derivative with respect to y of f of x is equal to partial with derivative with respect to x of f of f of y of x y. So 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 what you do is you take the first f x of x y, you differentiate that with respect to y that should be equal to f y of x y differentiated with respect to x, okay. And these are partial derivatives, okay. So, so this is a condition. So, if you have this condition, then this integral is independent of path and your work becomes independent of path, okay. So, now, now uh, this is a, this is again a useful condition. You can always check whether your, uh, whether the, uh, the, the work that you calculated is path independent or not using this way, okay. However, uh, let me mention one thing that, uh, that when you say, when you say uh, it is independent of path, that means you can take any path, okay, any path and you will always get the same answer. Now, there are cases when, uh, you know, integral might be same for two different paths, but it might not, not be same for other paths, okay. So, so even if it is path dependent, you might accidentally get, uh, you might accidentally get the same work for, for two parts, okay. So, that is also possible. But when you have this condition, when you satisfy this condition, it will be independent for any paths, okay. So, let us uh, quickly do one example of a line integral. So, so here, okay. So, what we are going to do is an ex example. Let us uh, calculate the work done. So, if f of x y is equal to 1 over x square plus y square i plus 1 over x square plus y square j, okay. What is the work being done going from a point, uh, from, from going from, so, so, so calculate work done. in going from 1, 1 to 2, 2, okay. And uh, we will do, we will do using two paths, paths, okay. So, the first path, okay, you first path is you go from 1, 1 to 2, 1 along a straight line and then you go to 2, 2, okay. And then the second path, so, so this is the first path. The second path is you go from 1, 1 to 1, 2 and then to 2, 2, okay. So, so just pictorially what you have is, you 
you have the x and y okay you have the points 1 1 so this is 1 1 and here is a point 2 2 okay and you do two paths so so in the first path you go from 1 1 to I'll just use two different colors so the first path you go this way in the second path you go this way so this is 2 this is 1 so how do you calculate both these works okay now uh, what you have to do is uh, in in either case you'll write that the work done okay so so let's calculate from path 1 okay so this is equal to integral now now what you'll do is you'll write uh, you you will multiply this by dr and dr is dxi plus dyj so so what you'll get is uh, you'll get uh, dx over x square plus y square plus integral dy over x square plus y square both are over path 1 i'll just i'll just put a 1 here okay so so these are the two things okay now uh, you have to do both these integrals okay over path 1 now if you can see in path 1 there are two paths in one path only the x changes in the other path only the y changes okay so 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 in the first part of path 1 okay in the first part of path 1 your dy is 0 okay in the second part of path 1 dx equal to z, dx equal to 0 okay not only that in the first part of path 1 so so uh, so in first part of path 1 dx not equal to 0 dy equal to 0 and y equal to 1 okay in second part of path 1 dx equal to 0 dy not equal to 0 and x is fixed at 2 okay so along the entire second part of path 1 x is fixed at 2 okay so this this is the information about the contour that you have to use in order to do this integral so 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 when you when you put this condition you will get so for the first part of part 1 dx is not equal to 0 so dy goes out okay so so all you have is you have an integral over dx the limits of x are from 1 to 2 okay and you have x square and y is set at 1 so you have x square plus 1 so you just get an integral over a single variable okay and you can do this integral in the second part what you have is integral dy now y goes from 1 to 2 okay now x is fixed at 2 so it is 4 plus y square x is equal to 2 okay and in the second part dx equal to 0 so that part goes away okay so so this is how you would get for the first part so you can do both these integrals okay both these integrals are re related to uh, tan inverse okay so this is nothing but uh, equal to tan inverse in this case it will be tan inverse of 2 in the second case it will be tan inverse of half half okay so it is a sum of sum of these two is this now in the second part in the in the second part you will get again very similar things okay so so but what will happen in that case is that in the first part your dx is zero only dy is changing so what you will get is integral dy over y square plus 1 from 1 to 2 plus dx over x square plus 4 from 1 to 2 okay and again again this is the same tan inverse of uh, 2 plus tan inverse of half okay so so basically it is uh, what you find is that the work is the same for both these parts and in this case you can easily look at f of xy okay you can look at both these and you can easily uh, you what you what you what you do is uh, is for these two parts you get the same work okay so but but is it is it path independent in general the answer is 
not path dependent in not path independent in general okay and why did i say it is not path dependent in in general you take you take uh, you take uh, d by dy of 1 over x square plus y square okay that is d by dy of this is not equal to d by dx of this which is again 1 over x square plus y square clearly these two are not equal okay you take a partial derivative of this and partial derivative of this you will get different functions and they are not equal so in general it is not path independent it is just for this special case of these two paths that you got path independence okay so in the next lecture i'll talk about uh, surface and volume integrals Thank you.